The secret to creating crowd-worthy, delicious appetizers is to pack in as much flavor as possible into every tiny bit. Today, I'm sharing a few of my favorite low-carb appetizers that are stuffed, literally and figuratively, with so much flavor that everybody's gonna keep coming back for more. Of course, I have to start with stuffed mushrooms. They are rich and savory, and every bite you're gonna get a blend of earthy mushroom mixed with the taste and textures of whatever you're stuffing it with. This recipe combines a harmonious union of sausage and cheeses with some fancy ingredients and a little spicy kick. After you clean the mushrooms, remove the entire stem from the cap so that you have a place to add your stuffing. Then take those stems and finely chop them up because I don't like to waste food and so we're gonna add these into our stuffing mixture. In a large skillet, melt a tablespoon of butter over medium high heat and then add in the sausage. And if you got sausage like this, just remove the casing and squeeze it into the skillet then cook your sausage until it's no longer pink and also break it up into smaller pieces too because you don't want chunks of sausage in the mushroom. Once it's browned, transfer all of this buttery sausage into a bowl and set it aside. And leave behind any of the drippings that you have because we're gonna use that to saute our chopped shallots. Saute these shallots until they're soft and golden and then add in some more butter and our chopped up mushroom stems. Season this with a little bit of salt just so that it will help those mushrooms release their fluids to help evaporate some of that. Now it's time to get fancy. Pour in a quarter cup of dry white wine. Oh wait, this is supposed to go into the pan. This is gonna help deglaze all those brown bits that we have at the bottom. But I mean, you might as well pour yourself a glass too. All those brown bits have the flavor, so never ever leave those behind. Simmer this for around three minutes or until the alcohol is cooked off and most of that liquid is evaporated. Then we'll remove the mixture from the heat and then stir in some thyme. Not the clock thyme, but the herb thyme. Now for the cheese, add in eight ounces of softened cream cheese and an egg yolk, and then three quarters a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Mix this until it's combined and then stir in your cooked sausage mixture and the mushroom mixture. And if you wanna stop here, you could. You just grab a spoon and eat this out of the bowl. I'm not gonna judge you because it's really that good. But I recommend instead filling each mushroom cap with a little bit of this sausage mushroom mixture. You wanna gently pack it in so that you make sure you're getting as much of the stuffing as possible put in there, and then just add a little lump of it on top too. This will go on a parchment lined baking tray and into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And while our oven's heating up, I actually transfer these into the refrigerator for around 30 minutes. This will just help our cheese mixture firm up so it's not melting all over the place when you bake these. And they'll bake in the oven for around 15 to 20 minutes just until that stuffing is golden brown on top. This is my absolute favorite stuffed mushroom recipe. I could really eat these as a meal. They're that good. Next, I have a holiday inspired appetizer for you. But before I get into that one, I wanna share with you the only way I've been enjoying hot cocoa on a low carb way of eating, and that's with Element Electrolytes, who is my sponsor for today's video. They released a new medley of chocolate salts. This limited edition chocolate medley features chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberry. And each packet of Element still contains their normal 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. I'm loving all these flavors, but the chocolate chai is my favorite. In fact, it's almost all gone. It's so simple to make. You just open up a packet and then pour it into your hot water, or you could use heated nut milk or cream. Give it a mix and you're done. What makes this better than regular hot cocoa, besides the fact that it has electrolytes in it, is that there's only one gram of carb per cup, and it's five calories. You can't beat that. It's so easy to make. And yes, it's slightly salty, but it's not overly salty either. It's actually a good salt, good salt flavor. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. You can try eight of their flavors free with any Element order. All you have to do is just go to drinkelement.com slash ketofocus to get yours. And if you order it and you don't like it, well, they have a money back guarantee. Just give your box away to a salty friend like myself, because I will take it. I need some more chocolate chai. And they'll refund your money. I think I'm the only one who can go from wine to hot cocoa in a matter of minutes. Back to the trees. These are keto pizza stuffed Christmas trees. To make them, first you need to make my favorite keto pizza dough. It's on my website. Just Google keto focused pizza to find the recipe. And I've doubled the recipe to make these pizza trees because I want to make enough to feed a crowd or they might just serve as my lunch for the next week. 
So you're gonna need 20 ounces of shredded mozzarella cheese. You're gonna melt this in the microwave at 60 second intervals, stirring it in between until it's melted. If you think the microwave's the devil, just melt some on a stove top, just put it in a nonstick skillet, it does the same thing. Meanwhile, to a food processor, add in three cups of almond flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. You're gonna pulse this until it's combined. If you don't have a food processor, you can try using a high powered blender, or you can use a hand mixer. I've done that, it just takes a little bit more effort and time, or you can use your hands, which takes a lot of effort, time, and some muscle. You'll see why in a minute. For the cheese, you really want it to be melty and warm because if it's kind of melted and cooled, it's not gonna incorporate into the dry ingredients as well. So make sure your cheese just hasn't been setting around and cooling. You want it right out of the microwave, add it to the food processor along with two eggs. We're gonna pulse this until a dough ball forms. And sometimes while you're mixing it, this will happen where the cheese doesn't wanna become friends with the almond flour. And then you have to stop the process and tell them like, why don't you wanna make friends? And break up the cheese and mix it in with the almond flour and that works a little bit better. But keep mixing until the dough is uniform like this. Next, we'll get to rolling, and you'll roll this in between two sheets of parchment paper. Lay down a wet paper towel first. This is going to help keep your parchment paper from sliding all over the countertop. Then you're gonna divide your dough in half. I just use my good eye just to kind of evenly divide it in half. And the reason why we roll this in between parchment paper is because the pizza dough will stick to the rolling pin if you don't, and it's the best and cleanest way to roll it out into an even thickness too. Ideally, you wanna roll it out into a rectangle shape that's around 12 by 15 inches, and you want it to be half the thickness of a number two pencil, which is probably around an eighth to a quarter of an inch, somewhere in there. Sometimes I'll flip the paper too, just to get the creases out of the other side. That looks perfect, and now we just have to do the same to the other dough. And then compare them because you want them about the same size because you're gonna sandwich one on top of the other. Now on to assembly. Starting with one dough, take off the top parchment, but keep the bottom on for now, and then layer down some sliced or shredded cheese. I'm gonna use some provolone cheese. Then add your pepperoni or salami. I ran out of normal size pepperoni, so I had to go with these larger ones. And then add some marinara sauce. Yes, this probably would have made more sense if I put the marinara sauce on first and then did my toppings, but sometimes I don't have common sense. And then lay down your top dough. Next, cut off the edges that aren't even because we're not making Charlie Brown trees here. And then you'll need to cut the dough into one inch strips from the long edge. I took this ruler from my kids' school bag. I also wanted to show them that you use math in everyday life, so it's a good lesson, life lesson. Use a pizza cutter or a knife to make your cuts. And while I was doing this, I realized that I probably packed in too much pepperoni because it was really thick and really hard to cut into these one inch strips. So I had to make them larger. I do recommend using less pepperoni and the amount I have in the description box should be the correct amount that you should use. And also don't cut them any larger than a one inch strip. I found that when they bake, if they're larger than one inch, that dough just kind of flattens out into a not so nice looking tree. I mean, it's still nice looking and it still tastes good. To make your pizza tree, just take one strip and fold it like an accordion going smaller with each turn. Then secure it using a wooden skewer. I found the smaller appetizer skewers work better than these really large ones, but work with what you got. Then add these to a parchment lined baking tray, sprinkle on some Italian seasoning, and then bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for around 16 minutes or until the dough is golden brown and it looks cooked through. You can see how the dough slid down some of these, but that doesn't matter. They still look like trees and they still taste really good. Both of these appetizers are really just child's play compared to my all-time favorite stuffed keto appetizer, which is a play on a jalapeno popper with a special surprise inside that will change the way you make jalapeno poppers forever. It's also what helps get me back into ketosis whenever I fall off. Just click right here to see how to make it. 